Was the replacement of sugar with high fructose corn syrup a scientifically influenced decision? Was it a long-term strategy to save money? Or was the whole campaign driven by a political agenda? Is high fructose corn syrup healthy? Is it safe? Let's dive in! Soft drinks are almost always part of a typical US diet. Almost one in five people say they consume one can of soda each day. Over the past few decades, the beverage industry has undergone a significant transformation. In 1984, a bomb exploded in the food industry that changed the course of consumption forever. Coca-Cola and Pepsi decided to stop using sugar in soft drinks, replacing it with high fructose corn syrup. This was the first time Coke and Pepsi had changed their formula. Why? Why changing the formula to a new form of sweeteners? Some consumers claim to detect a noticeable difference in taste between sodas made with sugar and those made with high fructose corn syrup. Why taking the risk? In this video, we're gonna explore the reasons behind the change, how the political reasons and the relationship with other Central American countries impacted USA's most consumed sodas. What is high fructose corn syrup? High fructose corn syrup is a liquid sweetener made from corn. Corn, transformed into a syrup, is mainly made of glucose, but that is not sweet enough. It would need the same amount of regular sugar to make something sweet. So companies add another step to turn more than half of the corn syrup into fructose. Fructose is a highly sweet molecule, so companies need to use less of this syrup in order to make sodas equally sweet, so it becomes cheaper for everyone. Most of the high fructose corn syrup we drink or eat come from soft drinks and sugary food drinks. However, high fructose corn syrup can also be found in canned fruits, canned desserts, flavored yogurts, baked goods, breakfast cereals, and condiments such as ketchup, jams, and jellies. It can be anywhere, and it actually is everywhere. Information on added sugar levels plays an important role in consumer perceptions of beverage quality and safety. Consumers are concerned about the calories and the amount of sugar present, but not so much about what drives the numbers. Nutrition labels are the tool people use to judge how healthy diet sodas are. While the presence of added sugar is considered negative, the absence of sugar is considered positive. The numbers are tricky. Fruit juices that contain natural sugars can be negatively seen, for example. U.S. consumers, in their majority, care about the calories and not so much about the quality of the ingredient. The decision to use high fructose corn syrup. Was the replacement of sugar with high fructose corn syrup a scientifically influenced decision? Was it a long-term strategy to save money? Or was the whole campaign driven by a political agenda? It all started with Gay Mullins, an Oregon citizen who launched a crusade to bring back the old formula of Coca-Cola, shortly after the Coca-Cola Classic restoration, five years before. Coca-Cola had already started adding high fructose corn syrup to the mix. Mullins held a press conference to complain that the drink tasted different from the Coke he remembered. He wouldn't rest until Coca-Cola was made with real sugar again. Mullins' agitation towards high fructose corn syrup turned out to be a huge fiasco. Coke won the war. Sugar out, high fructose, in. What motivated the beverage industry to switch from sugar to high fructose corn syrup? In early 1971, a massive surprise sale of US grain to the Soviet Union triggered a boom in corn prices, which in turn led to a massive increase in corn plantings. By the mid-70s, corn prices were back to their lows. Farmers continued to plant neighbor to neighbor. The result? A massive overproduction of corn. ADM, an American agricultural company, was heavily involved in corn production. In just a few years, ADM invested heavily to increase even more its capacity to produce their corn just as sugar prices were peaking on world markets. But overnight, sugar prices plummeted from 65 cents to 8 cents a pound. Corn processing giant companies had access to all the cheap corn they desired, but they could only turn a profit if they could find a new market for corn products. Ethanol, designed to disrupt mass market gasoline, and high fructose corn syrup would break the big sugar's grip on the soda industry. Both ethanol and high fructose corn syrup processes were related because they both involved a process called wet milling that isolates the cornstarch. Companies needed to find a solution for their investments in corn. They had too much. 
Andreas, CEO of ATM back then, tried to find extra support into the political spectrum. Andreas contributed heavily to the 1968 and 1972 campaigns of Humphrey, Jackson and Nixon, anticipating legislative help, and that would come very soon. In 1970 came the first legislation that ensured farmers had a price support on corn production. In 1973, the Agricultural and Consumer Protection Act said that if the market price of corn dropped below what the federal government said as a loan level, the Commodity Credit Corporation would make up the difference to individual farmers. Corn producers, like ADM, were getting help in producing cheaper corn at US taxpayer expense. On the other hand, US sugar companies, who had seen their selling prices drop drastically, were trying to find a solution with the overproduction of sugar worldwide. New emerging countries like Brazil were becoming important suppliers of the global sugar market and were bringing the price of sugar cheaper. So American companies were putting all their efforts in trying to lobby against sugar produced overseas. Newly elected President Ronald Reagan signed a legislation setting high quotas for imported sugar, rapidly raising the domestic price of sugar to double the price on global markets. But their objective was for sugar companies to make money and not the ones overseas. Suddenly, high fructose corn syrup became the cheapest sweetener and the quota ensured that the price of domestic sugar remained high. On one side, we had companies trying to find a way to make money out of the sweet corn and on the other side, sugarcane companies were trying to be the only ones making money in US soil. For decades, government tariffs have not only driven up the price of sugar, but also the value of the plantations when it's grown. So by the time 1984 rolled around, sugar had become an exorbitant sweetener in the United States, and companies like Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola were tired of paying the inflated price for this product ingredient. Why making unhealthy foods so cheap? If these ingredients hurt us, shouldn't they be less in demand and therefore less available and therefore not cheap? Why should the government subsidize unhealthy food? Well, the government doesn't exactly subsidize unhealthy food, but it subsidizes ingredients that are high in demand by the fast food industries. What do these foods have in common? There are seven agricultural and food crops that are heavily subsidized by the federal government. Corn, soybeans, wheat, rice, sorghum, milk, and meat. Any good economist can tell you that people respond to incentives. In a way, that's all you need to know about economics. If you subsidize something, you get more. Government subsidies for the ingredients that are hallmarks of junk food, corn, wheat, soy, and sugar, in various forms, are pushing Americans towards junk food. Instead of supporting small farmers who grow fruit, nuts, and vegetables, the program now mainly subsidizes large producers who grow a handful staple of crops, industrial oils, processed meats, and refined carbohydrates. Between 1995 and 2010, the government distributed $170 billion dollars in agricultural subsidies to finance the production of these foods. But the real reason for subsidizing ingredients was always different. The grand program began decades ago, in part to support struggling farmers and secure America's food supply. The subsidy program no longer serves its original purpose. It's 2023, and we don't have a lack of food problem. We have an ultra-processed food problem. It's not a secret that agricultural subsidies have helped us bring us high fructose corn syrup, factory farming, fast food, a two soda a day habit, and the near death of family farms. Over the years, prices of fresh produce have risen, while those of meat, poultry, sweets, fats and oils, and especially soda, have fallen. Wealthy big farmers are benefiting from this program, and we're losing the opportunity to encourage the development of the kind of agriculture we need. It's not a money problem. Money is already in the budget. It seems more like a political problem. Is sugar better than high fructose corn syrup? The Corn Refiners Association wants us to believe that high fructose corn syrup is natural and poses little or no risk to our health. The truth is, high fructose corn syrup is artificially made. It's the first time in history that our bodies eat it. High fructose corn syrup isn't necessarily worse for us than table sugar, but there's too much of it in our food supply. High fructose corn syrup, which comes from corn, 
contains about 55% fructose, 45% glucose, and other minor sugars and other ingredients. Remember, fructose turns automatically into fat when it enters your body. Table sugar, called sucrose, is made of 50% glucose, 50% fructose. While high fructose corn syrup is often blamed for the country's obesity epidemic, we should be concerned about sugar in general. Today, consumers have built a negative opinion about high fructose corn syrup. As a result of this consumer's concern, in some parts of the world, Coke and Pepsi stopped using high fructose corn syrup in their products. They simply removed the name high fructose corn syrup from their products. But guess what? Despite the bad publicity in the USA, Pepsi and Coke never stopped using high fructose corn syrup in their sodas. It's probably too cheap not to use it. Does it make a difference using sugar or high fructose corn syrup? In flavor, maybe. In nutritional value, some research studies suggest our bodies use high fructose corn syrup and other sugars in the same way. So if you eat a lot of foods with added sugar, whether it is high fructose corn syrup, white sugar, brown sugar, honey, you can gain weight anyways. It's the same effect in your body. High fructose corn syrup can cause bloating and gas. That's because large amounts of this corn syrup feed the natural bacteria in our gut which produces gas. Food and beverage manufacturers around the world have initiated efforts to promote healthier diets by reducing the amount of sugar, salt and fat content in their products. But this, this introduces another challenge in maintaining flavor, consistency and bringing a positive impact to our health. So there it is, our major beverage brand switched to high fructose corn syrup as a long term strategy to save money which was initially fueled by a commercial beneficial political agenda. While the companies are actively working on formulas that would bring more nutritional value and less harm, it's fair to remember that companies are here to make money. And using cheaper ingredients is always in their best interest. Look after yourself and your health. Nobody is safe. When you go to the supermarket and want to buy something, be aware that sugar can be hidden under different names. For more interesting videos about the food industry, don't forget to subscribe. Ciao, 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 ciao.